What's going on everybody? Troy Barmore here along with Zen Love and Joe Kirk. We're with Grand Seiko at Watches and Wonders. We're gonna take a look at some of the amazing novelties that they have created. With that, I'll let you take it away, sir. All right, thank you, Troy. Of course. So this year we're doing some very cool introductions uh, that are all over the place in terms of technology. Mm. So we have, you know, typically people know we, we love doing new movements and introducing, you know, new technologies through that. But this year, we're introducing a familiar design mm -hmm. that has a totally new patented technology for the dial itself. So this new manufacturing process, we're calling optical multi-layer coating. I'd like you to get that in your hand, right? Move it around as you change the angle, Ooh. pay close attention to the color. Wow, oh wow, yeah, that's really dynamic. So this new, basically a PVD type process yes. is utilizing multiple layers of nanofilm, oh which gosh. each react to light differently. And as you tilt <sighs> and look at it from a different angle, it starts to change color. I mean, that's, that's a magic trick. Check it out. Yeah, that's incredible. That so I, the main colors I usually tell people to be looking for are like a burnt orange, mm -hmm. then it'll transition to red, then it'll transition to like a magenta yeah. color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a magenta for sure I see in there. But yeah, it changes immediately, doesn't it? So this color morphing dial is uh, a totally new technology, but one of the other great benefits is that the uh, color can be done in red. So typically with PVD processes, you can't achieve red. And this is one of the great benefits of this multi-layer coating is you can get red and red tones like orange and magenta, pink. And that's why we wanted to showcase this technology with that color first, or at least that range of colors. So. Obviously, there's, there's a lot more capability and possibility with this technology that we developed, but we want to, you know, start with the hardest, of course, first. So this is our Tokyo Lion design. Mm -hmm. It has our caliber 9R96, our highest accuracy of plus or minus uh, half a second a day, or equivalent to 10 seconds per month accuracy. Right, chronograph GMT, and has our Tokyo Lion dial pattern, or it's our uh, Lion's Mane. Uh, dial pattern. Mm -hmm. So the other benefit of this new technology is that you can actually see the texture really well because typically to achieve red color we have to use like a lacquer paint right, right. which fills the grooves of the texture so you lose it. Yeah, no so. this has so much depth and again between the shifting color and the actual pattern itself I mean uh, this this is one of those dials that you can uh, you will I feel like you will own this for for a couple months and then see something new about it. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> that's the good stuff. I always feel like with Grand Seiko, you know, you can just stare at the dials yes. forever. You know, yes. whether it's the second hand of the spring drive or the dial pattern, but now we got the color to throw you off every, every few moments. <laughs> it is the kind of um, technique that will be able to be used in other watches with other patterns, and yeah. do you think you will plan to do that? Yeah, yeah, probably, uh, you know, we can, we can certainly achieve other colors and do it to other patterns. Um, the only problem we're facing right now is production capacity is quite a bit small. So we'll be introducing, uh, introducing this in a limited edition of 700 pieces worldwide. Mm. So in, in uh, US is going to be uh, 13,400. So. And we can look forward to perhaps seeing this technique in future watches? I would say so. All right. Then. All right. Can we get more of the next one? All right. So. You just slide that whole tray over here. Seriously, the, 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 the color is nuts. Thank you, sir. Very cool. Yeah, they, they talk about it in the release, but it's not, you know, yeah, you, you don't, don't really you don't get, get it until you see it. Cover up that sticky for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Yep. Right, do you want to lead in on this one? Or do you no, no, just, 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 roll with just it? keep it running. Yeah, just yeah we're good. It. We're in it. All right, so next on the list is probably the most talked about for us for the show. Well, uh, it's very difficult to say because- I was gonna you know, say, it's quite a, quite a few pieces with some buzz around it. Yeah, so this, we get into movement technology. Mm. So new innovation, and you know, we, we came out with this amazing new caliber, the 9S A5, back in 2020. Mm -hmm. And it introduced these amazing technologies such as our patented dual impulse escapement, our patented Grand Seiko free sprung balance with uh, our own overcoil shape that we designed as well, also patented and incorporated into that and then it had a twin barrel. Mm. So we were able to achieve high frequency of five hertz or 36,000 beats per hour mm -hmm. with 80 hour duration, right? So that was a, a game changer for yes. us. And last year we introduced Tentagraph, which was the, the next evolution of the uh, 9S A5 caliber, mm -hmm. uh, which was a, basically a modular type chronograph. Mm. 
but a lot of people don't realize that we actually had to rework the entire design of the of the main plate just to right. just to get it to work. So it's not as uh, simple as it seems. Right. People think modular is just plug and play, and you know, but that's not remotely the case. Not not the case yeah. in the Tentograph, and certainly not the case here. So yeah. what we've introduced is our Caliber 9S A4, which is manual wind, and of course we could just remove the rotor and mm. and call it a new movement, but that's not our way. <laughs> so with this particular uh, caliber, we're introducing a whole new look and feel. Mm. So obviously you can clearly see we've redesigned the bridge work, we have a power reserve indicator now, but when it comes down to the functionality, we only really retain the, the basic elements that I already mentioned, right? The, the escapement, the over, uh, yeah. overcoil, free sprung balance, and twin barrels. About 40% of the movement was completely reworked, mm. and the reason we did this is, you know, the designers were smart. It's practical to have an automatic. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, why do you buy a manual wine movement? Mm. Right? It's all about nostalgia. It's all about the engagement. It's all about that daily the ritual and feeling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with this, the engineers worked out this new innovative click. And throughout the entire process of winding the crown, you have a totally new feel mm. and sound. And everything about it is so that when the user engages with the watch, it can be highly appreciated. I liken it to vintage pocket watches. Right, I have some old uh, Seiko, you know, 1800s oh, pocket watches, yeah. and it's it reminds me of that, just much better. So, for this new caliber, we're introducing two models. So, first, I'll mention the um, continuous production model. Mm -hmm. So, this is going to be based on the concept of white birch, as we've done previously mm -hmm. with the 9SA5 caliber, as you see on my at least right wrist, mm -hmm. uh, except the motif of white birch is totally different, where the white birch with the automatic movement is based on the forest mm -hmm. of white birch and the many stalks of trees that you see. This is based on the birch bark itself. Mm. So instead of a linear uh, vertical pattern, it's horizontal. Oh, yes. Instead of a more silver tone, it's more of a yeah, uh, pure white. And of course, because of this new movement, it's in a much smaller size at 38.6 millimeters. Uh, also 9.95 .9 millimeters in height. So I'll pass oh. the, this, this model is gonna be brilliant Goodness. hard titanium, which is our own alloy of titanium that's twice as hard as stainless steel mm -hmm. and is as brilliant as platinum. You may realize uh, you've heard this name of this material before on uh, the Kodo as an example. So we'll also be introducing in rose gold with a special dial with 18 karat uh, markers. So for this design, for the case design, we're using our Evolution 9 style, which was also introduced in 2020, except now we're doing it in the aim of a dress watch. Mm -hmm. And so with this, you know, obviously we've downsized, but we've also changed the design of the markers, the hands, as well as the case itself, making thinner lugs and shorter, mm -hmm. uh, just for that better overall dress feel, so. Yeah, that is. And this is the uh, third movement in the series, correct? In uh, the Yes. So we have caliber 9S A5, which is the automatic. This is A4, correct? And 9S A4, and then we have the 9S C5 as oh our tentograph. Right. I mean, that that's about as perfect as it gets. I've been hearing that quite a bit this show. Good golly. <laughs> So the price That's US dollar will be uh, 10,700 for the Brilliant Hard Titanium mm -hmm. and in rose gold will be 45,000. Can you talk about the process of making the dial a little bit? Yeah, the so texture? it's it's made by press. So the press patterning is how we achieve most textured Grand Seiko dials and in this process, you know, we're able to have extremely tight tolerances typically by uh, you know, uh, handwork mm. that's involved in carving the mold. So by pressing the pattern into the dial uh, with a hand-carved mold, we can achieve some really amazing textures and also incorporate handcraft, but also at the same time achieve consistency. And in this instance, uh, as I mentioned on the original white birch, we're doing more silver, uh, which is electroplating or galvanized process. Uh, this is more focused on a lacquering process to achieve mm -hmm. the color. So then, in, in you know, in reference to that sort of multi-sensory experience, right? The, yes. the the sound, the feel of the winding. I think that is a perfect segue into our next piece, which I think is about as multi-sensory and multi-dimensional of a watch 
that exists, right? This is very true. So, I mean, this watch is the heartbeat of Grand Seiko right now, right? So in uh, 2020 also, we introduced our very first concept movement. It was called T0. And T0 was this amazing introduction that incorporated an integrated constant force mechanism into a tourbillon, but on the same axis, rotating around the same axis. So this mechanism was the first of its kind. It was basically striving to achieve ultra high energy efficiency so we could achieve high frequency as well as long duration. But at the end of the day, the goal was to achieve ultra high accuracy. Mm. So in that, we we're able to create our most accurate mechanical movement that we have yet uh, in caliber 9ST1, which was introduced in what we called Kodo in 2022. Mm. So behind the scenes, we, after we introduced the, the first Kodo, right? Actually, before we introduced the first Kodo, behind the scenes, we had the concept of light and shadow, mm. right? This is a part of every Grand Seiko design. It's a part of the Japanese sense of aesthetic, but light and shadow were always the, the concepts behind the design scheme for Kodo. And in 2022, we introduced the first Kodo based on Yoyami or Twilight mm. is the concept, so dark strap, dark gunmetal gray uh, type plating. Mm -hmm. And for 2024, we're introducing the second iteration of Kodo, obviously based on light in the light and shadow theme, uh, or based on Hakme, which is known as uh, Daybreak. So we're calling this model Daybreak. So a few changes from the original model back in 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of the dark gunmetal gray plating, we're doing a more silver tone which I think is personally, I mean, you can appreciate the high level of finishing. Yes. Right? This is completely hand finished, uh, approximately 340 components. And, uh, you know, to pay attention to the detail of the three dimensional uh, layering of the design of the movement. So I'm sorry, I'm holding this oh, too much. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm, you're oh, I'm chopping trying to get, get it oh, in my your hands. Goodness. But, um, you know, that's wow. one of the primary differences is the color of the plating, but also the color of the jewels that, uh, at least some of the, uh, most of the jewels that you see uh, are going to be in a sapphire tone as opposed to the ruby. I mean, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think just the, the vibrancy of this and it, it almost makes it even seem even more complex. It, I, <laughs> Words fail me. I mean, this it's a it's a cathedral. I mean, this is absolutely wild. Yeah, get that there. Just, I mean, remarkable. And in particular, I, I'm I'm also partial to the the strap accompanying it. Now, is this the same technique of leather working that was used in the initial? Correct. Kodo? So yes, very the, special leather. Everyone thinks it was like a shark or ostrich oh, or no. some you know exotic uh, material, but it's actually just calf. Mm -hmm. But it's a specially cured and uh, and treated uh, in a rushi lacquer. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, made by Himeji Kurazan. Wait, the, Kurazan wait, leather. The strap itself is treated with urushi lacquer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Urushi lacquer is uh, used as a preservative on a lot of like household goods as an example mm -hmm. in, in Japan. And so for uh, Himeji Kurazan making this type of leather, right, it was uh, traditionally used in samurai armor. Mm. And so this helped preserve and strengthen the armor. And we utilize uh, this for the technique for the strap. And on the first Kodo, it was black, which is mm -hmm. you know more of the common uh, fine. Right. But in this instance, you're seeing it in white for the very first time. And if I'm not mistaken, he's the only artisan or the the only tannery that that Correct. does that this. Tannery is the is the only uh, in Japan still in existence. So, so it truly is a, a, a huge component of Japanese heritage represented in this piece. Absolutely. The other thing I love too, and kind of a subtle note, but uh, the case construction mm. also kind of reminds me of samurai armor because we used uh, ah, Platinum yes. 950, yes. right, for the inner case and the inner bezel. And then as a, basically a shroud of armor on the outside, we have our brilliant hard titanium, which I just discussed, right? Mm -hmm. Twice the hardness of stainless steel and the brilliance of uh, platinum, essentially. Uh, you can look at them side by side and they're nearly the same color. So really a remarkable material and uh, two remarkable rem materials in yeah. this, uh, you know, in this incredible introduction. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. So yeah, it's been a uh, very exciting time. You know, the uh, first Kodo was limited to 20 pieces. This will be the same, though it will take us, you know, several years oh. to deliver. Um, but, you know, the price very similar at 365,000.
Joe, thank you so much for taking us through these. Oh, I mean, it's my it, pleasure. This is this is such a treat, and I'm sure everybody will will absolutely be nose pressed to their to their <laughs> screens. But fantastic, well done, and congratulations. And again, thank you oh, so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you guys later.